Now, imagine this, hundreds of kilometers of untouched, serene wilderness, millions of black flies, hundreds of thousands of caribou. We're talking about the Thelon River. It's located east of Yellowknife and flows all the way into Nunavut. Alex Hall has been taking people by canoe to this remote oasis for decades. He's a canoe operator, a tour operator from Fort Smith, and He's in love with the Barren Lands. He calls the place paradise. But this year, Hall's one-man business came to an abrupt end after he found out he had cancer. Doctors gave him about a year to live. CBC reporter Priscilla Huang spent a few days with Alex this July in Fort Smith. And here is his story. (laughs) So how'd you get that scratch on your stomach? Well, that was a scary... That was my last incident with the bear. It was scary. I had a bear charge me three times at 12 o'clock midnight, and I'm standing out there with just my underwear on. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Well, hi, my name is Alex Hall. I'm, uh, I have a business called Canoe Arctic Incorporated, and uh, I've been in business since 1975. Uh, the business is taking people on canoe trips in the barren lands and northern fringes of the boreal forest, uh, mostly in the barren lands. And for those of you who do not know, the barren lands are the mainland tundra, Uh, The largest wilderness left in North America by far. Twice the size of Alberta, twice the size of Texas. And uh, I guess the largest uninhabited wilderness left on planet Earth, at least north of Antarctica. The mainland is the forest, and that's the barren lands, the Arctic. eh? So, you know, there's a bit of symbolism there. (laughs) It's a map, kind of, I guess? Sort of, yeah. Wow. Well, the professor I worked for uh, doing my master's degree at University of Toronto was Doug Pimlot, and he was a famous wolf biologist and environmentalist. And, um, and in 1970, uh, when mo- a lot of us were finishing our thesis, he, he wanted us to go to Baffin Island to work on some of his wolf and caribou projects. And ironically, in view of my later career, I was the only one who wasn't interested in going. <laughs> But in the end, I decided to go because I thought I'd never get another chance to see the Arctic, and it was a free trip and so on. The pivotal moment was we were flying out of uh, in a small chartered airplane in, a, in, a cl- in cloudy weather, and I remember we broke through the clouds over the great plain of the Kujwak. And I don't know, we weren't very high above the, land, the ground then, maybe three or 400 feet. I looked down and all I could see was lush green tundra covered in caribou and covered in snow geese. And that was the pivotal thing that changed the rest of my life, although I wasn't aware of it yet. But ba- ba- the hair just stood up on the back of my neck and my imagination flew and I was hooked. At that second, that very moment, I was hooked for the rest of my life. Well, I, I would never be the same, the same again in the rest of my life. It was there, the, the moment that changed the rest, the rest of my life. I don't, I just didn't think I'd get emotional about that, but it did. <laughs> Sorry, give me a few minutes here. It was a life, life-changing moment. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Well, hi, Bob. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. I just uh, came back from a chemo a couple of days ago. And, um, about, the same, about the same as when you saw me last, really. And uh, I had this vertigo or dizziness or whatever you want to call it to a mild extent. And I um, had the CT scan. And boy, she told me two hours later I had inoperable, incurable cancer, is what she said. So they sent us down to Edmonton at that point for further analysis, which confirmed what she told me after two after two hours later after two hours of the CT scan in Yellowknife. So it was really a shock. That's the bad part. You know, it was really the end of my life as I knew it. Um, I would say Alex is my best friend in the whole world. So. Alex says the same thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hello, guys. Don't talk to me. My name is Kevin Antoniak, and I've known Alex since 1982. Alex Hall is, the, I would say, the quintessential guide and outfitter. Um, 
And, uh, and he got into that not as a money-making enterprise, but Alex Hall became a guide and then an outfitter uh, so that he could be in the barren land. He's probably more worried about not paddling the Thelon than dying. It's not that I'm going to be dead or dying, it's I won't be able to do this anymore. And that's a, it's a, you know, it's a different perspective, eh? Way back to July 21st, 1978, when I saw probably what was the largest caribou herd of my life. And at four o'clock in the morning, I was awakened by noises. And what you hear is this noise. First, at a distance of miles away, it's a murmur you hear. And then when they're up close, you have tens of thousands of cows and calves calling to each other continuously. The cows are going like this all the time. And the calves are going. And you get tens of thousands of the animals doing this all at once. It's just a steady din. You can hear that sound before you see them. You hear that noise and holy cripes, there's a huge herd of caribou up there. This is the one time that we saw this muskox. We were chasing this muskox on the land trying to get the great photo. And it was amazing because Alex had spotted it from really far away. And then he became like a little kid and he was like, Follow me. My name is Geneviève Côté, originally from Quebec and I've moved to Fort Smith in 2006. In 12 years that I've known Alex Hall. I have been on a trip with Alex. One of the things that I remember is the very first night uh, we set camp and after dinner he pulls out this really old notebook and then he starts reading the book from cover to cover um, with all of the notes that he has gathered over all of his decades of guiding up there. So from everything from you know, how to do your business in the woods to um, what box you'll find all of the field guide books and uh, don't touch the wolf poop and all of the details that, you know, he's, he's come across over the years and he's, uh, he's a meticulously, uh, he's got a system down to, you know, to the finest detail. And uh, anyway, the bugs are so thick that there were actually layers of them covering my shirt. My shirt was 100%, and my pants too, but my shirt was 100% covered in black flies. And then there were another layer or two on top of that. And so I, I was walking around like I had a suit of armor on. And if I did this, I would crush thousands of black flies here. So I had to be <laughs> to be very careful. I, I made supper under those conditions. And then all these people were in their tents and one of my old clients, he always liked to rib me. He was with me for 27 years. He always liked to rib me about that night because when I had supper ready, I called out to the others in the tents, come and get it, you cowards. <laughs> well, of all of the people that he brought up north and took there and experienced this river that he adores, it's his favorite place in the world. And, he, and he's constantly, every summer, all summer long, he's been sharing it with people, and I think it's his greatest legacy. You know what? My ashes are going to go there. Mm, well, it was always one of the places. I had about six places in mind that I was going to spread them around, but now I think I'm just going to one, one place. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you choose that? Place? Uh, it's just my favorite spot. That's all. all have our favorite places and that's my favorite place. <laughs> 2003 was the last herd and it wasn't a big herd either. It was around 30,000. Yeah. That was the last herd I saw. And I don't think I've seen 500 caribou since. And I haven't seen a single caribou in the last two or three years. Not one. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ranging all over that territory up into the back river and all over the Thelon watershed. There's nothing out there in the summertime, nothing. It's an empty land. And the, the, the big danger, of course, is what they call development, industrialization, mining, and roads, and so on. That's what's going to kill it all in the end.
I was there at the right time, in the right place at the right time. I saw the best of it from the 70s, 80s, and up to the mid-1990s. It was just a paradise. It was Eden when we had the big populations. <sighs> Caribou, wolves. I don't know if it'll, ever come, if it'll ever come back or not. I hope so. Hmm, what a story. You just heard the voice of Alex Hall. He's a now-retired tour operator from Fort Smith. He's taken people to the Thelon River near the Nunavut border for the past 43 years and paddled it for 46 years. For some photos and a web feature on Alex's story, you can visit our website, cbc.ca slash north. And here's some good news. A few weeks ago, Alex emailed us and told us that after months of chemo, his cancer is now in remission. So that's great news. Uh, coming up, we will hear about a very unusual seal in Nunavut. And also, Leela Gilde is in the main studio here, just behind the glass, warming her voice up and getting ready to play some live music. That's going to happen between 5.30 and 6. Right now, though, some more music from 2018. Yellowknife duo Pixic just released their first album a few weeks ago. It's called Altering the Timeline. This track is called Tuktu Strut. <laughs> 